All right, we're going to continue day one of our Protect Your Vote series with a look at what's being done on the ground throughout the country to ensure election integrity. The group Heritage Action is launching its first ever state advocacy campaign to help secure and strengthen state election systems. They're initially focusing on eight states, but plan to get to all 50. Joining us now is the executive director of Heritage Action, Jessica Anderson, and Hans von Fonskowski, a senior legal fellow and election expert at the Heritage Foundation. Thank you both for joining us. Sure, thanks, thanks for, for having us. us. All right, Jessica, um, Explain to me um, what eight states you're starting with, why you focused on the first eight, because when I looked at the list, I got to be honest with you, I, I was surprised not to see Pennsylvania as part of that initial group based on some of the things they did in the lead up to the last election. Well, thanks, John, for having me tonight. So we started the year really with an ambitious goal in mind, which was first to identify all of the concerns coming out of the November election itemize them and be really specific about the chaos that we saw in November, and then what the role was for state legislators in tackling some of that legislation. So we've listed all of those provisions, all those recommendations at saveourelections.com, and then that rolled into our priority eight tier target states. We looked at Iowa, Georgia, Florida, Arizona, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Texas. Some of those states obviously have seen already huge successes by the state legislators to pass big election integrity omnibuses this year or piecemeal proposals like we saw in Arizona. Texas is obviously still ongoing, not yet complete with the shenanigans of the last 10 days. And we looked at a state like Pennsylvania, Sean, and to be honest, we wanted to be there, but the state lobbying laws in that state actually prohibit groups like mine, a 501c4, from engaging our grassroots in the state. Otherwise, we'd have to have fierce donor disclosures. So. Pennsylvania would have made the list had the state laws already not been so challenging for groups like us to engage. Interesting. Hans, we've seen states like Georgia, Georgia try to implement voter integrity and those on the left right. just losing their mind. Uh, listen to what Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock had to say about some of those new laws today. These same actors are now busy rolling back voting rights in a way that we have not seen in size and scope since the Jim Crow era. In fact, Georgia became the first of now 19 states in just a few short months to pass laws that restrict voter turnout in the wake of the November 2020 election. One of the things they're most frustrated about is voter ID, but the interesting thing is Senator Warnock, Stacey Abrams, and many other folks on the left just a few weeks ago said right. they were actually never against voter ID, which is false. They are speaking out of both sides of their mouth. How do they get away with this, Hans? Well, unfortunately, too many in the media uh, uh, tilt towards the left, and they let them get away with it. I mean, a, a quick example of this is uh, te Texas reform, uh, Georgia reform. If you look at articles that came out in major uh, uh, newspapers like the New York Times and elsewhere, uh, they have all these attacks on the states without actually often going into and describing what the laws did. With regard to Senator Warnock, keep in mind that uh, these Jim Crow claims, which are absurd, are the exact same claims that Democrats made more than a decade ago when Georgia passed its first photo ID law. Contrary to the claims they made back then and the ones they're making today, not only did turnout not go down in the state, but over the past decade, they've had record, record registration and turnout levels of all their voters, including black voters. Uh, it, it's just these claims are outright lies and propaganda and just not true. OK, so I want to actually I'm glad you said that. I want to ask you both the same question. But Hans, I'll start with you since it, I've read your work. I'm going back now quite some time. You have been probably one of, if not the leading expert on voter fraud and voting laws in the country. You have been doing this a long time. I keep hearing over and over again, there's no voter fraud. It's not widespread <laughs> voter fraud. We're rolling back voting laws. It's Jim Crow. Here's the deal. We on the right keep getting behind the eight ball. I, I pointed out exactly what you did. When they implemented voter ID for the first time, they worked with the NAACP and minority participation rates went up. It was a lie right. what they've been telling people. How do we on the right 
get this out. Make sure that we are, because what, look what happened with voter ID. They flipped once the polling was clear, once the messaging right. was solid, they bailed. Right. So Hans, I want to start with you and then you, Jessica. Like, how do we on the right convey the messages that A, there is voter fraud, and B, that what they're talking about is, is actually just lying? Well, they, we could talk about voter fraud by doing things like uh, using the election fraud database that the Heritage Foundation that we've established. It has hundreds of proven cases from around the country. But second, uh, those who uh, support election reforms intended to increase integrity need to not be afraid of this constant racism claim, because not only is it not true, but the polling, as you, as you say, shows the American people actually agree with election integrity efforts, they support voter ID overwhelmingly, including black voters. And uh, state legislators in favor of this just need to not be afraid to confront this and say, this is not racism. We're just trying to have fair elections for all voters. Jessica, I don't mean to jam you. I got about a minute, but what, what is your, how do you respond to that? Well, I think Hans is exactly right. We can't be fearful in talking about this, and we have to be clear about what these bills do. They make it easier to vote and harder to cheat. In a lot of places, they actually increase access to the ballot box. It's right. not just about tightening the chaos and clamping down on the fraud and the voter rolls and cleaning them up, but actually allowing more Americans, more citizens to vote. So I say, talk about it, use the resources from Heritage and Heritage Action, and don't be afraid to engage on this issue. The polling is with us. The truth is with us, and the American people are on our side. I totally agree. And, and people have got to remember, there are things that we did, and, and some of it potentially not legally, during a pandemic to allow people to vote, like drop boxes. It's not rolling right. back. It's such a joke. Right. I appreciate what you guys are doing, both at Heritage and Heritage Action, to get the word out, to document it. It's so crucial, the work you're doing. So thank you both. Thanks for having us. Thanks, John. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.